TCU and Texas. TCU gets the win 17 to 10 in Austin. The Longhorns. Uh that was I I mean just bleh. um B. Sean Robinson touched the ball 10 times in this game. Or didn't touch the ball 10 times. He uh what's the word I'm looking for? He ran the ball 10 times. Let's pull up the box score so you can see what we're talking about. Uh 12 times, not 10, excuse me. 12 carries for 29 yards here. And why you don't just run him more and, and try and get it figured out, especially when Quinn Ewers is having an off night. This is not the game that we expected, right? I mean, this was... I don't even know what to think of this. Uh, like it, maybe it was a Joe Gillespie masterpiece. And maybe it was, you know, uh, Pete Kwiatkowski, Kwiatkowski. I can't remember how to say his name. Uh, Pete, the defense coordinator for Texas. Maybe both of them just knew what was going on. Gary Patterson, of course, helped with the game plan. But 17-10 to 10 is not what you would have expected, especially the only touchdown for Texas being a defensive one. Did not expect that. Not in the slightest. Uh, Max Duggan in this game, 19 out of 29 for 124 yards and one touchdown. Kendra Miller, 21 carries, 138 yards. He did have the 75-yarder. Uh, but that's what happens when you keep running it, right? It, like, Bijan Robinson had 12 carries for 29 yards. His long was nine. Well, Kendra Miller ran the ball nine more times and broke off a 75-yarder. You got to keep going at it because you know that that is the weakness of the TCU defense. Teams have been able to run on them. So, uh, let's uh, let's move off of that. Let's look at the actual stats for the ballgame. TCU ran 72 plays to 61. Both teams did have a turnover. Texas, of course, the defensive touchdown. I mentioned total yardage, 283 to 199. Texas had less than 200 total yards in this. 82 Atlantic jumps in says, how did Vegas have TCU as the underdog in the game? Uh, that's easy. When you look at at the actual stats and whatnot, one, TCU has played like a ton of backup quarterbacks, so you have to kind of readjust exactly what their defensive stats are. TCU's defensive stats were not good. They just weren't. Texas, whenever Quinn Ewers has been healthy, has certainly been able to take advantage of other teams. Uh, the, some of the losses could be explained. Obviously, the loss to Alabama, you lose by one point. It is what it is. Quinn Ewers went out in that game. Texas Tech, you lose that game in overtime, uh, but you didn't have Quinn Ewers, Right. You lose the game to Oklahoma State, but they were up early. They lost late. There were some turnovers that you can't really predict, et cetera. It's, there were ways to certainly see why Texas uh, should have won this game, should have been favored in this game, right? But you look at this. Neither team hit 50% on standard down success. Neither team, like TCU, 36% success rate in this one to Texas, only 26%. Uh, the PPA per play, like, a predicted points added per play was actually negative for both teams. I mean, just just ridiculous. Yards per pass, Texas was 4.4 to 4.3. Uh, TCU, yards per rush was 3.6. Uh, Scotty jumps in, unavailable or unbelievable how both Texas and Texas A&M have all those highly rated players but don't have much to show for it. It, it is a debacle. I'm, I don't even have A&M to talk about on today's show, but... When Jimbo Fisher is getting mentioned in the same sentences as Mike Dubose, you know things are not going well. Uh, when he is getting outcoached by Cadillac Williams, yeah, it's not good. It's I, I can't even, like, that thing is in a tailspin there. Uh, with Texas, it's kind of the same thing. It's like you know that the talent's there, and you know that they have got dudes that are, this is a more talented team than what TCU has. And yet, they're just not very well coached. Uh, this was... A debacle from the word go. Uh, TCU, 19 out of 29 passing. Texas was 17 out of 39. They couldn't get out of their own way. I wrote down uh, that this might have been a Joe Gillespie masterpiece. That's the TCU defensive coordinator. Uh, still, in my opinion, the best hire of the offseason. Not even close. Uh, Sonny Dykes going and getting Tulsa's defensive coordinator. He was what made... You see what Tulsa's turned into without him. Like, that guy is a schemer. He knows, and no, the defensive stats have not been great for TCU, but I'm telling you, that bunch, like, they they needed. They needed Joe Gillespie at Tulsa, and they certainly are doing wonderful things with him at TCU. His adjustments at halftime every single week are just awesome. I mean, this is, this is a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So, 
Yeah, uh, red zone success rate, neither was very good. Uh, TCU, 50% defensive run stuff rate. That's awesome. Uh, but at the same time, like, if you're Texas, you've got to keep running the ball. This was, this was crazy. But TCU gets it done. They do what they got to do, especially on the road. Uh, this team is a lot of fun to watch. A lot of fun to watch. They're able to break out some, uh, some fun plays. I, I was happy. I was happy with the, uh, with the result. So, cheers to TCU getting that done. This team is uh, a lot to reckon with. Um, like Texas, you know, five tackles for loss, five sacks. TCU only had two uh, TFLs and two sacks. Uh, this is what a crazy, crazy game. And TCU now sitting there at 10-0. Got two games left before the Big 12 title game. Just awesome. Just awesome to think about. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.